Okay, so for a very long time now, I've been talking about, hey, let's talk about my Pathfinder character. Character, since I, I have multiple now. But specifically to Vega, who is sometimes known as the One Punch Monk. And I've been struggling to find time to do it. But since I've recently gotten into miniature painting, it, it occurred to me that I could just, you know, kind of mix the two, do some painting while, uh, uh, while I talk about Pathfinder. So, stories of Tobago. First off, Tobago is half work. Um, she's kind of sheltered and has trust issues. <laughs> Yeah, your, your average half work. One of the stories of Tobago, she's traveling with um, a bard that flirts with everything that moves, a, a female drow cleric of Elastre, and I can't even remember who else at that point. It might have just been the three of them, but. She's like this teenaged, innocent girl monk that lived in a monastery, but slight self-esteem issues, urge to sit in, or urge to fit in. So very early on, uh, she would say things that she thought sounded, you know, mature. So this joke about tusking popped up. It was basically the half work um, Pathfinder version of Do He Eat the Booty? But it became this huge joke. And then Nora, the uh, cleric, finds out wait, all that talk of tusking, and you're a virgin. What? So she takes it upon herself, being the uh, caring woman that she is, also a fucking psychopath, um, to get to Vega laid. And we're in this particular town, can't remember where, and the DM randomly rolls up, oh, you find a half-orc paladin. He is really pretty. He rolls a couple more dice, figuring out stats and stuff. Like 18 charisma for a half orc, who, by the way, half orcs get minus two. Um, but he just made him an eight, uh, an 18, saying, "Oh, he's level eight. He added two points to his charisma." We're like level five or six. We should have seen the flags then. So, bringing in my magnifying glass, because I'm going to do eyeliner on this bitch. So, Nora goes up, and she's got a ridiculous diplomacy. So, on Tevega's behalf, she seduces this uh, half-work paladin for Tevega, which... Partway through this, as he's rolling dice, our DM just starts giggling. And we're like, what? He, he stops and he's like, I rolled his height. How tall is he? He's four foot eight. Guys, he's shorter than I am. I'm like, wait, is he half orc, half dwarf? How does that even happen? Was his mom a halfling? He just shrugs, he's like, I rolled minimums. So, 4-8, we immediately decide his name shall be Small. So, Tevega goes upstairs with Small, even though his name was like Clarence or Cedric or something, he had a real name, but it was gone. His name was Small. And 
they get they get ready to go. Tobago being, you know, a monk. There's not much to take off, but Small is removing his armor when a fucking babao shows up. This is a uh, assassin demon. We'd been chasing cultists, but uh, hadn't really gotten a huge lead. Um, one of the way we even found Small was because we'd been walking through town looking for people doing divine magics. Because hey, if we we find these people, they might be able to tell us any rumors or anything about demonic presence in the area. Well, the bow pops up, cold shot, backstab, unarmed opponent, flat-footed. Small is dead. Just insta-dead. So Tavega runs downstairs to Nora, who set this whole thing up. Well, you know, Tavega sat there blabbering. And she's like, Nora, Nora. Something happened. And, and Nora looks at her and goes, well, that was kind of what I was hoping would happen. Something. And she's like, no, 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 Nora, there's blood everywhere. What did you do? It wasn't me. And so they run upstairs. They find the body of Small. Tavega explains, you know, evil demon thing popped out of nowhere. I didn't even get my first kiss. And then the anger kicks in. We will avenge him. So... They start tracking down who could have possibly summoned this demon. And this is when we found out that when pissed off, Tavega rolls a lot of natural 20s. So we, we basically, we track down the first cultists. And... It's this babao, which should have actually fucked us up a little. And um, the, the two people that summoned them. Tavega literally gets up to the first cultist. Nat 20 is her flurry. And um, rolls 99% on her crit, which means she punched the dude's head off. Which DM's like, you know what? It's like... They're adjacent, so you can just start punching the other guy after you punch this one's head off. Second flurry. Um, hits. Third flurry. Nat 20 again. 95. Which I can't remember what it was for, for bludgeoning, but dude was dead. Turns to the demon. And the rest of the party is just like, shit, um... Do you just want to let her keep going? And at this point, she's just screaming, For small! And everyone, of course, is like giggling their asses off. Because wouldn't you? And we don't even take time to like talk to this poor demon. It's just, bam, she hits him so hard. By the way, you, you kill a demon, it doesn't die. It goes back to the abyss. You kill it hard enough, it cannot return from the abyss for a thousand years. That's how hard Tavega killed it. So we find out that the leader of this cult that's been, you know, getting people to summon demons, and on top of it, has been uh, basically, like, creating demon people like hey you guys need help with I think there was an invasion or something you know what it help having demon blood in your veins by the way that never helps so we tracked down um, these leaders and we're on full avenge small miss mission impossible 
and we're, we're still babies. We're tiny. I mean, that's why they killed the paladin. The DM's like, there was no way I was going to let you have a level 8 paladin with you due to power of the P. Power of the P. So, um, yeah. There was a reason he died, but then that launched a quest, y'all. So we find this, like, CR ridiculous witch that's leading all these people. And at this point, like I, I, I've said previously, monks do not get a lot of skills, you guys. They get, like, int plus two or something. So Tavega didn't have knowledges. She didn't have diplomacy. She didn't have, you know, anything besides sneak and perception and survival. That was pretty much it for Tavega. Occasionally put something somewhere else, but we're still pretty low level. But that sneak skill, man, she manages to sneak up with our bard right on top of the witch that's the leader. And punches him so hard his chest implodes. Insta-kill. Turns out we weren't supposed to kill him yet. Because killing him immediately summoned a succubus. Oh yeah, there was a party of seven um, bad guys following him all in um, masterwork breastplates with masterwork long swords. So our cleric is getting sucky fucked. And we dying. We dying so hard. Um, this is when a DM must make the choice to do a deus ex machina to save our asses or let us die horribly. Instead of doing that, our DM decided to do what I call a deuce ex machina because it's shit. He literally starts flipping through his notebook to find um, a character sheet of one of his characters that he can just bring in and save our asses. Apparently he has like a full-on demon slayer in, in his character repertoire, which, hey, it saved us, but damn. Damn. I am going to show you guys what um, dry brushing looks like. Ugh. A little bit of white, a little bit of concrete gray mixed. And dry brushing is a technique where first I gotta mix my color. You basically have to have a couple of brushes that you're willing to sacrifice. So dry brushing, you load your brush and then you basically tap it on a paper towel until there's almost no paint left. And then you use it and what it does is it brings out the finer details. You go from that flat color uh, oh. There we go. It's like where a wash gets the bottom details, leaving the top details clean. A dry brush gets the top details, leaving the bottom clean. Dry brushing is one of those techniques that will instantly elevate your miniature painting without actually being as difficult as the detail it brings out makes it look. This is basically a Bob Ross technique, you guys. Bob Ross would have you load up a brush and then you start going from the top down to the bottom. And as your brush runs out of paint, the color naturally fades. That's all this is. 
and it brings out detail. Of course, you do have to kind of sacrifice a brush to, to dry brushing. Instead of being, you know, the neat wedge that this used to be, it's all floofy. So it turns into a blender brush. Anyway, so all of a sudden, screaming from the woods comes this uh, tiefling ranger, favored enemy, uh, evil outsider. He's a demon killer with a silver scythe, saves our asses. Um, and we end up, the, the succubus leaves, everyone survives. But we're like, all right, we need, we need to kill the succubus. We need to find the rest of these guys. So. Need to let that dry a bit. And I'm going to do some dry brushing with a bit of silver and white to increase depth on this person's hair. This will actually show probably a little better than um, such a small bit exactly how much dry brushing can improve. Like right here there's a bit of color just naturally. I added some dark gray to the deeper creases in the hair but that looks a little flat because it is very obvious, you know, there's a line there. What you want to do, I'm going to take actually quite a bit of white and only a tiny bit of silver because I don't want this to be overpoweringly shiny. Hair sometimes gets just too shiny. Anyway, so we now have this demon slayer. It turns into a DM device to, to let us know, hey, this is bigger than you thought. This guy was converting people into demon people, but there's so much more going on. Hold on, I need to save my puppy from the terrible outdoors that she keeps escaping to. So... We loot the um, the leader of this group that was like a, a witch, Darren the Witch. And in his possession we find a list of demonic names so that you can summon a demon. So we go into town. We find a church. We're like, do you have um, materials to make a summoning circle? Which is not something you normally ask the fucking clergy. And we set about um, summoning each and every name. And most of these things are like dretches and like really low level demons. Because, you know, it if you're a human summoning demons, you're probably not summoning the big guys without being a really big guy yourself. So we uh, end up summoning all the little ones and then we've got like a Babal Lord, which is going to be really tough. And everyone's like looking around like, do we really want to do this? I mean, this is kind of dangerous. This could go really, really bad. And Tavega looks at them and she's like, four small. Which causes everyone to face palm. But for small. So they buff her like bull strength, bears endurance, which is all we really had at that point. I mean, like I said, we were babies. This was one of those fights like, you look at your DM and you're like, 
This is supposed to kill us, right? It was supposed to kill us. Hey, baby. You're fine. Yeah. Yeah. I love you. Go. No, that's not me asking for company. I was just leaning over. So, we summon, and you get a surprise round at the summon. So everyone's got a prepared action. They're like, yeah, we're going to fuck this fucker up. Tavea miraculously gets, despite not having improved initiative, miraculously gets first go. So this fucking Babao Lord, designed entirely to fuck our shit up, shows up. And I start rolling my flurry, uh, my um, attack. I, it's a surprise round, so I don't get an actual full flurry. But um, DM granted, you know, you were expecting this. You were prepared. You were buffed. I'll give you two attacks instead of just one. I'll take it. So this thing pops up. Nat 20. Roll to confirm. Nat 20. Roll again. Nat fucking 20. The DM just looks at me and goes, that's a, that's a triple crit. Triple crit in D&D &D is insta-kill. So, this thing designed to fuck us up. See how the hair starts blending is suddenly dead. He's like, you go, you go full, just super ninja, jump in before this thing can even blink and realize it's out of the abyss. You have reached into its chest, pulled out its heart, and screamed, for small. You are wearing a demon lord as a bracelet. Well, the bow lord. See how much that brings out the depth? And now that I've done that, I will do a slightly darker gray. For the tips. Because wherever you have more shadow, you're going to want darker colors. And if you can progress it as naturally as possible, you already get some advantage from your dealing with the 3D image its own shadows will exist. But you can help it with paint. Anyway, so we have established that Tevega punched things. And after this, we end up just kind of traveling aimlessly. We, we've destroyed as many demons as we can, although now we're like, all right, we're going to kill their leader. But that's a true demon lord, and we are nowhere near that level. So around that time, we actually lost our cleric in favor of a... At the time, we didn't have anyone replacing the cleric, but just randomly. The cleric that had become Tevega's best friend disappears. You don't do that to Tevega. She has trust issues. Everyone leaves her. She was mad. Especially since, you know, the cleric leaves stating... I didn't feel appreciated. Well, about the same time, they end up in Thunderstone, where they find more of these demon people running an inn there. So our bard finds the deed to the inn. And guess what? It's our inn now. And one of the demon people wasn't very tough. His name is Gary. 
he is now to cook at this inn. Has never mentioned how we forged the deed. Because Gary. He's very scared of Tobago. I think most people are very scared of Tobago. So, we have this in. Our old cleric leaves. And all of a sudden, this fucking dwarf shows up. Phil. I will explain Phil a little more later, but for now, we're just gonna... This is the wrong one. I just used my dry brush. To mix. My bad. But, I will talk about Phil more later. Um... Phil McCock. Yes, that was actually his name. And then when we all picked up on it and started making fun of it, his character gets, you know, offended. Your name is Phil McCock. You can't get offended. Like, that's not even allowed. So here is a little more of that. Um, Bob Ross technique. So I'm putting a load of paint up at this edge and then I'm pulling it down so it's super wet at the top and then it starts fading. As you pull it down you run out of paint and that creates a fade from the top that's a certain color and it goes down into the rest. I knew from the get-go I wanted to have something bright and pretty on, you know, a blue-skinned chick. But I originally thought, you know, cream cotton color, linen, and it just wasn't looking as good. And I made a mistake, guys. Uh, when it comes to paint, same thing as makeup. You get what you pay for, and if you buy cheap acrylic paints, they just don't they don't go as well. So when I first started this, I had paintbrush strokes all over, and it looked terrible. Basically, meaning that if you use cheap paint, you're gonna have a cheap look, and it I. I'm a gun nut that's also a D&D nerd. I already have, like, but you have to save money where you can. So I thought at first, all right, I'll just, I'll be fine. I'll use, I'll use whatever. It'll be great. No, no, no. It's, it is, there's a reason that there are specific paints. Um... If you want to take the time to take, you know, your cheap acrylic paints and thin them properly so that they are comparable to these, you're probably just going to end up spending as much money as you would have to just buy them outright. Right, out right. These are like, if you buy in bulk, a couple bucks per bottle and infinitely better. Okay, so to blend all of this out, kind of finishing on the dress, I am going to do another dry dress. Dry brushing. But this is the problem with dry brushing. Sometimes you have to decide between do I want to go lighter or darker? In this case, since I want to have this fade, I'm actually going to have to dry brush in multiple colors, which takes a relatively quick process and makes it a bit longer. But should be fun. 
I mean, and this is just the finishing part, guys. You guys didn't even have to watch all the uh, early parts. You'll get to see that with the uh, fire dragon. I'm going to try to... Probably less talky. But... Try to do some of the painting for the uh, red dragon recorded. So dry brush. I'm going to use my kind of medium color. Tap it out. And I need a slightly darker. Because I don't like how that's affecting the depth. Yeah, I'm going to go with the darker for most of us. Because the dry brushing is basically going to take all those little sharp lines, define them, while softening everything else. The dry brushing is basically your the filter built into the front facing camera on your phone these days. Bring out the good details, hide the bad. Shop. All right, now that I've done the darker section, you can see how much that brought up the color on the back end. Now we're going to dry brush down. You dry brush up, meet in the middle, dry brush down. And I'm sticking to the outside edges, you know, where light is going to be most prominent. Keeping in mind where light and dark come from is going to be one of the most important parts of painting a miniature. And I'm just going to take our very deepest shadows and line them. But you'll notice I start and so I start here and I just let the brush go down and then as I'm getting out of paint and coming up, slowly lift the brush so only the tip is touching. And what that does, it's, girls will be more familiar with this technique than guys and I think it might come more naturally depending on your skill set. Some guys are way better at this than girls, but it is very similar to the technique used for winged eyeliner, where you start at the tip, halfway through you press the brush down so you get the brunt of the brush, and then slowly return to the tip.
Oh yeah, that reminds me. I'm not finished. One last thing. Quick, very quick. Using pure white striations on her marble mole. I'm going to use a ridiculously small brush. This is an 18, 18 zeros. And it's a slightly long. This is a round, but it's long enough to act as a liner. Tiny little load of white. And we're just going to do little tiny veins. Just a soft brush before it has a chance to dry. Blend it. All done.